Anthony, we're here in Charlotte, North Carolina. You're homeless. Tell me about it. Uh, first, I want to give you thank you for giving me a chance to tell the story. I made a couple of bad decisions within my life, and I kept letting the past beat me up. I don't know how I sat there and let myself get to this point, but I wouldn't change not a day of it because I'm able to sit there and help people. Uh, I guess it started uh, about 13 years ago and I lost custody of my kids. Um, I took it hard. Uh, I was five years clean off of drugs and I went relapsed for a whole year. Then I met my wife, straightened up, and I stayed clean again for five and a half years. Me and my wife started having some problems. We wasn't communicating. She left, she came back, she wanted to stay and act like everything was okay, nothing had ever happened. But it didn't work. So I started, tried to stay clean, kept my job, ended up losing the job that I had for 27 years of while I was cook. About three years ago, she decided to leave. I'm like, okay. Took that really hard on myself. What could I have been different? But, over the years, I sat there and I realized everything happened because that's exactly how it was supposed to happen. The first year I was out on the streets with God and the Lord Jesus, the first thing I had to learn was about the Father. The second year I was on the street, I had to sit there and learn about the Son. I was forgiven and I was forgiven. Third year, I had to sit there and learn about the Holy Spirit. And oh boy! <laughs> so how long I have you still, been? Out wow! Here? How long have you been out here total? Uh, three years. Okay. Uh, I did uh, about a year in 2015. I did about a year, but after that, it all went away. Now I've only been out here for three years. This is not the life that I sat there and expected at all. But, well, everything. I never sat there. I never gave up hope. The only thing I sat there and did was give up on myself a little bit. Talking to traffic, you have to speak up a little. If anything, the problem that I sit there and I see out here now is people lost hope. They don't know what to hope in, they don't know what to hope for. So they sit there and they close themselves into their own little circle or own little group. They're running and they're hunting. And they don't need to sit there and run and they don't need to sit there and hide. So how do you stay in touch with hope? How do you cling on to hope? I pick up my Bible. I remember the conversations that me and my parents have had. Me and, friend, me and my friends have sat there and had some of the things that this God just tells me to tell people. Throughout everything, yes, I've lost people. I've had people die because they were shot. I've had people die because they were hit by cars. I've had people just OD. And this is just, some of it's recently, some of it I'm still recovering, still dealing with. But there's always hope. There's always people out here that will sit there and help you. But if you sit there and you don't reach out and even ask, how can they sit there and help you? 
my family still helps me and they don't even sit there and realize it. That's where I draw some of my strengths from. Some of the strengths I draw is just straight from being angry. Angry with the things I see. Angry with some of the things that I've let happen. Love conquers all of that. Now you pitch a 10 every night on the sidewalk. Yep. Right. Over there by that tree. Yeah. <laughs> right over by that tree over there. That's no way to live. No, it's not. It's not. And it's hard. What Lord's would, holding me up. What would you want housed people to know about homelessness that they probably don't know? People. Just like you. All they did was make some bad decisions. All they did was try and run it high. If homelessness was a punishment for bad decisions, everybody would be homeless. Yeah. And we all make bad decisions. Every single person. A lot of people just running from their emotions. They're running, trying to run from their self. And that's the one thing you cannot sit there and run from. And some of the things is people sat there and just said evil and mean things to them and they can't sit there and let go. Gotta let go of it. You have to. Because if you don't, you can't progress. You can't be better. You won't be able to help somebody else. So now you survive by flying a sign. Yep. And you have some really interesting signs. You want to show a couple of them? Sure. This one? That's one I had to learn over the last three years. Still have bad days on it, but I have more good days than bad days. And this one. Too many people don't wear this. Here's another one. Too so what many kind of reactions? What kind of reactions do you get when people drive by? And they see these signs. They laugh. And then they sit there and realize. It's your life you're dealing with. And they put them on. Some people are, since I've been doing it for a minute, all I have to do is look at them. Some people see me coming from down the street and they'll realize I'm on the corner and they'll put on their seatbelt too. There's a few people that I want to thank because they passed by and they let me know. A few times I sat there and told them to put on their seatbelt. Right after that, they were in an accident. But now, they're here today. Yeah. Now, um, Urban Ministries is helping you. Yeah. And I, I, I hear you're going to get into housing soon. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll tell you this. If it was not for Urban Ministry, along with the people that helped me out here. I would have been dead a long time ago. If people like Allison and Carmen and Hakeem that really helped to hold me up. When I first sat there and got involved with them, I sat there and I told them if there was anything that was going to stop me from being able to get my housing or keep my house and they weren't gonna see me. That's the only reason why it's taking this long. There were people I was helping came and realized they really didn't need any help. Other people I was helping because they really did need the help. Mm -hmm. I was just putting other people before myself. I just love when somebody's going into housing um, because that's nobody should be out here. Plus, now I got to come back and do another interview. Hopefully, you're a good cook, <laughs> right? Yes. 
That's 27 years in with Wild Bob. Yeah, we gotta do before and after. So if you had three wishes, what would they be? I already have my three wishes. My three kids. Chloe, Lexi, and Cameron. Wow. I just have to sit there and have to meet my two daughters and spend some more time with my son. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. And God bless you, Mark. Thank you.